Sig mal. Hört alle. Mal. Hi everybody, Scott here. Today we're going to be drinking an old tea and uh, one of my favorites, a very special tea, uh, the 1996 CNMP uh, Green Mark Tuji. And it's a really unique tea because not only is it old, um, which doesn't necessarily make it unique, but it makes it special. It's, um, it's a very tippy ripe. So um, it's, like a, it's like a blend of Gongting, Tuji, and a grade one. So it's very, very tippy. Um, typically teas from this era um, tend to be more rough or more, you know, like having larger leaves or blend of large, medium, and, some, and less small leaves. But this is very tippy heavy, I guess you could say. Um, it's, stored in Kun, it's been stored in Kunming for 20, 23 years now. And um, yeah, it's just a really, really good tea. It was originally intended to be exported to Malaysia. Um, some of the, some of the, um, well, the, the wrapper is very, very thin paper. Um, the pr offset printing is pretty rough with a lot of like kind of, you know, offset marks here. Um, the paper actually varies from cake to cake um, because they just use generic CNMP style, you know, paper. They're just, you know, pressing it and wrapping it. Um, the nefe in some cases is not embedded into the cake. I was told that that's because they wanted to switch the wrappers when they when it was exported to Malaysia. I think some of it was, and then some of it wasn't. Um, so anyways, that's, that's the story behind the tea. Um, this is a tea that we sourced quite a few years ago, and we still have some. We really jumped on it when we um, came across it. I think we've been offering it now for, I want to say, five or six years. So... Um, but yeah, let's get to it. We've been doing more videos on some of the older ripes, which, um, you know, are really fun to drink and I think really accessible for most people because, I mean, even people who don't like ripe find that they like aged ripe. So let's get to it. Gonna drink the wash. Definitely gonna drink the wash here. I'm not using a strainer. I got a little bit of. That's the thing is there is a little bit of kind of real small leaf. Um, this is probably one you want to use a strainer um, with. Mm. Oh my gosh, the aroma is just insanely good. I'm gonna sip this and then oh, too hot give these a little bit of a drink some ripe earlier today um formulating the um year of the pig ripe cake um there probably there might be more than, there'll be several year of the pig ripe cakes but i'm thinking of calling this one year of the pig specifically um and i've got i think five five teas in the blend and it's really, really good. It goes 12 steeps, which for a ripe is really remarkable. Um, and the cha chi on that one is very strong. So let's see. Oh, the aroma in this is just, it's just got that wonderful aged, that dry aged aroma, fruit, a little spice, a little, you know, I don't know how else to describe it. Some people call it like a, like old book, kind of like a nice old book smell. <laughs> not like a musty old book smell. It's definitely not musty, not at all. Ah, oh, I just love that smell. Ah, oh, it's, and the fact that it's tippy um, gives it such a unique character as well, both in the aroma and the taste. Of course, we haven't got to the taste yet. You know, it's actually been probably a year, year and a half since I've had this tea. Um, it probably hasn't changed dramatically in that time. Um, 
although it has um, this is you know it has been stored in Texas now for a couple of years so um, a bit more humid here uh, in Texas not all year but some of the year but kind of like Kunming actually Kunming has a real summer here this the this, this spring and the autumn is more humid um, in Kunming the summer is the hot and, is hot and humid because that's the monsoon season so it has some similarities in terms of the amount of time that it spends in kind of a hot hot slash humid stage mm. wow that's just really sweet and fruity this is the wash going here real nice dark tea soup actually considering the age and I think that's again perhaps because of its tippiness um, I find that tippy um, ripes tend to you tend to want to um, brew them a little bit more carefully because they can really just just really come out strong um, you know more surface area I guess or let you know more water and just kind of gets in there like faster than it would with a little bit coarser leaf um, so that's one thing about this tea I highly recommend that you brew it um, carefully and keep the steeping times really short in the beginning um, it's still too hot I really like to be aware of this for some reason I'm I get all excited and you know I've got the tea the tea in front of me and uh, I get all excited and I want to drink it and then occasionally I'll burn myself or or I'll just you know start to burn myself <laughs> and then I'll start, no I'm just gonna wait mmm what an aroma I love that it's like this creamy thick pungent kind of like nutty and fruity I guess you could say at the same time along with a lot of other kind of just really kind of not easy to describe smells that, that are for me very pleasant what's up Lucy this is taken off I think she saw something outside that's got her got her excited She's running outside with her hackles up and growling. That's how she kind of starts, and then she kind of goes into the full bark after that. All right. So we got a few cups lined up here. The water was just super hot right when the video started. I think, in fact, it hadn't actually boiled when we started the video. Time to just write, because I knew I was going to talk a little bit before you know let's see here all right we're in business let's see what the next one is in business too hot all right wow wow it's interesting i think I can really taste the gong ting in there. I've always felt like gong ting has this really pungent, has almost like a chocolatey bitterness to it. And it also has like a mineral, like a, like a rock character, like a rock oolong or something. It has that mineral character to it, the, more so than some of the larger leaves in ripe. This has a very strong, like mineral, chocolatey, dense, thick, oily, um, kind of thing going on but in a but in a nice way it's it's kind of a, the way that I say it maybe it doesn't sound nice but it's it's nice mm. again very similar uh, perhaps even a little bit stronger than the second steeping here Well, this tea, I would say, well, let's, I'm not going to comment yet uh, about that. 
Fermentation level, I'd say, is pretty standard. Um, to me, it looks like it actually is more than one um, wet pile batch in here. I think it's probably a blend across a few different wet pile batches. They may have taken a Gong Ting from one wet pile batch and a Toji from another one because some of the leaves are um, kind of a light brown and some of them are like a real dark brown, um, which leads me to believe that the, the wet piling, you know, one a one wet pile batch was a light fermentation and the other one was, was darker. And who knows, There's maybe there's three, because I think there's three grades of tea in here. So there could actually be from three different wet pile batches. Um, pretty common from these um, old old teas, um, big tea factories like CNMP, um, that, that they would have, you know, just massive stocks of tea. And they would just kind of, you know, maybe the customer said, hey, I want a tippy, you know, gong ting style ripe and they would just kind of put it together and uh so anyways hmm this tea has a real strong character to it it's still got a bite it's still got just that punchy kind of bitterness um but it fades really fast into sweetness. And there is kind of kind of like beany nuttiness to it as well, which is really nice. Um, and like other Gong Ting teas and Tippy uh, Ripes, this is definitely a stronger one. It's definitely hitting pretty hard in terms of the Cha Chi. I would rate this as, um, as strong, especially for the age that it is. Um, of course, the aged kind of chachi is different feeling for me than younger ones, for sure. It's definitely not as... If this were a real young tea, it would be very aggressive. Um, excuse me. And this may be one of the reasons why it, you know we were able to purchase it. You know, I mean, it wasn't cheap by any stretch, but, you know, that it was still available perhaps when it was young it was just too much it would be very interesting to if we could somehow locate the the same the same batch of this tea aged in um, Malaysia where it was and try it that would be fascinating side by side Mm, there's a real nice woody character to it too that's coming out I'm noticing it a little bit more as the bitter Fade, fades just a touch. Let's go ahead and hit this up. Steep number seven. I think this water should be hot enough. Now again, I definitely prefer hot hot water. Um, I think if you're gonna, if you want to make the tea a little bit less strong in the beginning, just keep the steeping time short. That's that's the way to do it. I wouldn't go with cooler water. I think you're just gonna miss out on a whole range of things if you do. Um, but by keeping the steeping time short, you kind of, especially in the first three, four, and two, no, sorry, the first four infusions or so, I would definitely keep the steeping times real short. Hmm. It's interesting. You can taste a little bit of kind of like Sheng raw pour characteristic in this tea. Um, it's really coming through. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons it's got that kind of powerful, strong taste still is that there is quite a bit of material in here that's um, that's still got a kind of a greenish character, you know, so it wasn't heavily um, wet piled. Seven. Mm. This is one thing, another thing I like about old ripes. Once you hit some of the later infusions and you get some of that initial tanniny ripe chocolatey punch goes away, you get more fruit and you get something that I, I call aged sheng pour taste. Um, it's not the same, but it's very similar to like a 20, no, 30 year 
um, like Sheng Pur that's been aged well. You get a little bit of that. Um, and that's where you kind of start to see like, oh, I can, I can understand why people tried to make ripe tea as a way to create kind of like a fast aged uh, Sheng Pur. Um, it's never going to be the same, but in these later steeps here, I'm tasting like this one. It's just, to me, it tastes quite similar to an aged uh, uh, Sheng Pur. Not quite, but close. As close as a ripe can be. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and re-steep this, or re-boil uh, this. And, um, yeah, so I think, yeah, this is a tea that I would say is actually still one that can age further. Um, as we've seen with the 1990 CNMP, uh, seven, three brick that we have and the 1990 CNMP nine, zero, one, six brick, both of which we've made videos about, um, have pretty much proven, at least to me that dry stored right poor ages if it's you know a good quality one ages well and ages up to 30 years without you know and still maintains a lot of its interest interesting you know complexity and and and, and quality it doesn't just collapse into nothingness um, it might in a wet storage condition but certainly not in a you know relatively dry storage condition um, and this tea to me very much says hey i've got another I've got another 10 years or 20 years to show myself. Um, not to say that you shouldn't or couldn't drink it now, you absolutely can. Um, but it's still got a lot of potency left and that potency is gonna continue to transform itself over time. So um, again, this is one, you know, wow. I mean, when I'm 65, you know, 20 years from now, I'll pull it out and I'll try it and I'll bet you it'll be damn good. Um, so by that time, this will be really old tea. Um, it's already pretty darn old, but time flies when you're a poor collector, you know, or not, depending on how patient you are. I tend to have so many different projects and teas and stuff that I have in my library and sell. And some of them I, have sold out, but I still have a cake or two and I just tend to forget about them for a while and they just, you know, they're just there and then, you know, so it's happening, it's aging. It's just, um, I think this is number eight. Did I mess that up? I think so. I think this is number eight or no, would that be number nine? Yeah, that was, well, there was a wash in there. So, um, let's go ahead and hit that again. Yeah, real fine. All these leaves are just real small. They're all just like, not even my pinky fingernail across, you know, in, in, in terms of their length. Um, so very, very tippy tea. And this, I think, compared to per perhaps like the, the 7.3 brick or the 9.016 and some of the other ones, I'm gonna end up with water in my face. Um, and there's a piece of masking, a tiny little piece of masking tape stuck to my hand. That's brilliant. That's my... Um, those teas are going to probably steep a little bit longer. Um, this one, I noticed about six, seven steeps in, and then it kind of went to that kind of like real sweet, nice, fruity shun character that I was talking about, about here. Um, or here, rather. So... Mm. Again, nice fruitiness, sweet. Very nice. Um, we're gonna let this sit. I'm probably gonna, um, I'm gonna step away for a second, come back in a couple minutes. And uh, if you are still here, we'll, for, we'll actually, we'll just fast forward the video to this, uh, to the next, uh, to this final steep here. I'll be right back. All 
All right, I'm back. Let's, uh, let's drink this last deep care and see how, how it did. It's definitely, judging by the color, it's definitely weakened quite a bit. And I would say that's the main kind of drawback of this tea. Um, you're gonna get about 10 steeps out of it. Hmm, it's very nice though. I think you could do a couple more steeps if you pushed them with real hot water and it's very pleasant. Hmm, nice. Fruity, sweet, it's, again, it's got the, kind of like the aged young character. Um, little chocolatiness still in there. Um, yeah, I'd say this is a tea, the way that I brew it, 10 steeps, very interesting. Then if you want to steep it a little bit more, if you just like that real pleasant sweetness that you get with some of the later steeps, you could totally go for it. But um, yeah, again, check it out. 1996 CMP, um, Green Mark Tuji. Uh, it's on our site. I'll link it down below there. And um, there's samples available. There's 10 gram samples, there's 25 gram samples. You know, if you're not sure if you'd like it, but you want to try it, you know, get the 10 gram sample and, and have a couple of sessions with it. You know, you could do real uh, small sessions, like with a guy one like this, four grams each or five grams, the slightly larger guy one. Um, yeah, definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of age ripes. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.